Uh, hi there. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us here at Programmers Week. I'm Mayank Motani. Uh, I'm a senior associate software product engineering at Cognizant Soft Vision. And today I wanted to introduce you all to a great web development and testing tool for working with APIs. And the name is Postman. So let's get started. Um, and in today's agenda, we're going to briefly look at an overview of Postman and how it can help developers work more efficiently with APIs. Uh, then we'll get into some basics of this tool. And at this point of time, we'll get really hands-on and actually start making some API requests. Um, and then we'll actually look at some tips and tricks on how Postman can really improve programmer efficiency uh, and also promote reuse uh, when you're working with APIs. And finally, we'll open up uh, to the forum for some question and answer and try and uh, best answer any questions that you might have uh, regarding Postman, right? So let's start with an overview. Uh, what is Postman? Postman is an API client that allows users to create, share, test, and document APIs. Um, back in the day, it started as a Google Chrome extension. Uh, that was about a decade ago. And the idea was to be able to manage this growing complexity of APIs, its related testing, um, and it allows users to create and save simple or complex HTTP, HTTPS requests, as well as read their responses, save those responses. So, what happens is as a result of this, you get more efficiency, uh, reusability, and work becomes less tedious for developers. Um, Postman has now grown into a full-blown API build and collaboration platform and is widely used within the community, has over 11 million uh, people using it currently. And uh, Postman is freely available for download uh, it has a uh, Windows, Mac OS, uh, Linux, client, uh, and, and it's available for a number of uh, different platforms. And it also provides a web interface if you prefer using uh, a browser to you know, make your API requests and test it. There's also a paid version for advanced collaboration features uh, that you can use. Uh, so Postman is available for download at the link mentioned here. Uh, Anyone can go and download this. So let's keep moving. Um, so start with some basics. Here we'll jump into the tool now and uh, we'll actually uh, create a new workspace uh, to manage our projects and tests. And uh, we'll also create a new collection. We'll start sending some requests of different HTTP method types like get, post, put, delete, and we'll also look at how we can add parameters, authorizations, and headers to these requests. So let's jump right in. I will launch a Postman here now. So it's coming up. Wheels are turning. Let's wait for it to come up. So as you can see now, Postman has started. Uh, let me close this off. And let's create a new workspace here. So I'll go here in this workspaces section, click on new workspaces, and let's call this uh, PW Demo 2021. And I will just add some description here. So as you can see, we can have different types of workspaces. You can have a personal team or public workspace. For the time being, we'll just create a personal workspace and click on create workspace here. So we've got our own workspace to start working with. Right. Now on this button here, I'll click new and we can create a new collection here. As you can see, this collection is, helps you save your requests for reuse and sharing. So let's create a new collection and we'll just name this basics. So just like that, I have created a new workspace and a new uh, collection. And now I can start adding some requests and start working with my APIs. 
for the purpose of this demo, what I've done is I've already created a workspace. So let me switch to this. So I'll switch to this PW 2021. And this is the collection let, to start with. So let's look at the first request. Uh, for this first request, we are using an API called Postman Echo. So what this API does is it uh, responds or it gives you back the same information that you're sending to it. Uh, it's called a ping pong API. So let's submit this response request and look at what happens there. So if I submit this request, as you can see, I get some response back. Now, let's see what we've done here. Uh, what we've done here is we've added some params here, uh, like foo, foo two, and with value bar, bar two. Similarly, we've got this authorization section here. Uh, what you can do here is you can specify different types of authorization, be it your basic auth using user ID, password, or uh, you can even have NTLM authentication here. Uh, for the timing, we've used a bearer token here. As you can see, there's a token specified here. And similarly, we've set up a custom header, uh, my header. And so if I submit this request, as you can see this, I get these uh, values back for the arguments that we had set. Similarly, we've got our header back with the custom header value. And similarly, our authorization header back as well. And similarly, uh, this was a get request. You can similarly set up your post request or any other HTTP methods that you want to, like put, delete, et cetera. And let's look at this post request. So what we've done here is in the body section, We've also specified some uh, request body that we want to send through. And uh, we're specifying this as raw and the type of this request is JSON. So let's submit this request. And as you can see, uh, we get our arguments back and the body that we had specified in our request, we get it back in this data section here, right? So uh, we saw how we can create a workspace. Uh, use collections, save requests, and also create requests with different parameters, authorization and headers. Uh, so let's keep moving ahead. Uh, now let's actually move on to uh, some tips and tricks. Here, we'll see how we can really improve upon our requests by using variables. Uh, we'll also look at out-of-box dynamic variables provided by Postman. Uh, it uses something called a faker JS library. So we'll look at that in detail as well. And we'll also look at how pre-request scripts allow us to set variables based on some JavaScript logic. And the other thing uh, you can do is set environments. Let's say you've got your production environment, dev environment, QA environments for your APIs with different URLs and tokens. So you can uh, leverage environments within Postman to uh, make better use of, of your APIs. Okay, so for this, let's actually close these and we'll look at this other collection that we've got here called variables and environment, right? So let's look at this first request. Uh, this is very similar to what we had here in our basic section, uh, this echo request, but what we've done here is uh, we have made use of variables. So how can we make use of variables? It uses these uh, curly braces construct. And as you can see, instead of uh, using the actual URL, I've specified a base URL, and I'm getting this value uh, as a current uh, global variable here. So how can we do that? We specify a variable here using these curly braces, and actually we can go here, click on this icon here, and then go to this global section, click on edit. And then here we've specified variables. So you can add as many variables as you like in this section here. And you've got your variables, right? And this, these variables can be used uh, within your uh, request itself, in your params, uh, authorizations, and headers, even in body, everywhere you can use these variables. So let's submit this request. And as you can see, 
Uh, we did not specify the URL or these params, but we've used variables and these still uh, work. We've got our authorization header back and uh, all the other values that we'd specify, right? Let's look at the next thing, which is dynamic variables. So as you can see here, uh, what we've done in this particular request is we are specifying some parameters using these variables here, right? So random city, random email, random UUID. So if I had to uh, specify, let's say another uh, random variable, I could do that. Let's say I'll specify random phone number and I'll say phone. And if I submit this uh, request, let's see what happens. I've got some arguments back. This is city, Hubert, email is Paris 76. So we've got these values uh, which are specified for these variables. Let's submit this request again and let's see what happens. So as you can see, uh, we've got these values changing now. And th these random variables can be really helpful if you don't want to uh, reuse the same set of test values again and again. So you can also use these uh, variables which are provided out of the box by uh, Postman, right? So next topic or next tip is you can use uh, pre-request scripts. So you can use a simple or very complex JavaScript logic to set your variables. As we have done here, we are getting a variable called current date and we are setting it using uh, some JavaScript logic to actually set this current date variable value, right? So if I submit this request, I get my current date value back. So you can have really complex uh, uh, logic here to make your variable assignments as well. Let's move on to the next one, which is using environments. So what we can also do with our uh, environments is, let's submit this request and see what happens. So as you can see, we've got a bearer token here. It says something like e-token, right? Let me actually go to my authorization section and for my authorization here, I'm using a bearer token and it's using a variable called token. Now, what I can do is suppose I've got this API, I've got a dev environment for it, a QA environment and a prod environment. What I can do is I can set an environment. I can go to environment section here. I can go and click on new and I can create a new environment. I can give it a name and I will then be able to set up the variables that I want. to. So we've set up some variables already and an environment here. So as you can see, we've got a dev environment here, which has a base URL and we've got a token. Similarly, we've got a prod environment and similarly QA environment. So let's, uh, we can go and change our environment here. So let's set this to dev and submit this request. So, as you can see here, my authorization token is actually returning a bearer dev token. Now, if I go and change my environment here to let's say prod, I'm getting my prod token back here, right? So this is another powerful way of, uh, you know, organizing your API requests, organizing your environments that you're using and can be really helpful uh, for your API developers, or even uh, somebody who's developing a client-side program using these APIs, right? Um, okay, so let's look at the next section. Uh, okay, so we've got this note here, using current values for sensitive information in Postman. Let's see what this means. Uh, so let's actually go to this environment here. And as you can see, we are only setting these current values here and not initial values. What does this mean? So current values are the values which are only visible to you 
let's say if you're working in a team environment or you are taking an export of this collection and sharing it with your teammates for use, you can set those uh, sensitive values within current value section and nobody will be able to access these values. If you wanted to share the, uh, these variable values, you can set them in the initial value section. So from a security perspective, it's, it's really important to make use of these uh, current value sections as well. Uh, if you're using, let's say, a token that is only restricted for you to use and you don't want to share it with other team members, right? Okay, so let's look at the next step, which is we will be writing some tests here. Uh, we are mainly going to look at some predefined snippets which are provided by Postman and we'll look at how we can use them. We'll also look at writing some tests using a BDD library called chai.js. And this allows users to write complex API tests using a simple BDD approach, right? And another really important part of writing API tests is schema validation. So we'll also look at uh, how we can write a simple schema validation within Postman. So let's go and write some tests. Um, I've got this collection here called tests. And for this demo, we'll use a really cool public API from NASA. So let's get right into it. Okay, so this first request that I've got specified here, uh, it's called astronomy picture of the day. And it gives you a picture of the day provided by NASA. So let's go and submit this request and see what happens. Uh, okay, I'm getting an error, which is for NASA base URL, which, okay, so let's look at this. Okay, why this is happening is because we've got this variable unresolved, right? What we should be doing is, uh, I've already specified an environment for this called NASA API. So if I change to this environment here called NASA API, and let's go back to this base URL here. And as you can see, I'm getting my values here. So let's submit this request now. And now I get my response back. So within this response, I've got some copyright information and explanation and the actual uh, URL for this picture of the day. Let's look at this image. Okay, so it's loading up. Right, so we've got this uh, beautiful image from the NASA API. And this actually is for a big dipper, uh, some sort of a galaxy image. Cool. So let's actually go and write some tests for this response that we're getting back from this API. And first thing, first test that we want to write is for the status code, we're getting 200. Let's see how we can do that. Uh, as you can see, we've got a section here called snippets, and you've got a number of uh, test snippets written here. Uh, to set an environment variable, get global variables, et cetera. So you can use a number of uh, ways to define your variables even within your test. Let's go and click on this. And just like that, I've got my uh, status code test written. So let's submit this. And if I go to this test results section here, as you can see, I've got my status code as 200 and this is working fine. So if I change this to let's say 201 or something else, if I submit my request again, and you can see this test fails and I get an assertion error saying, uh, I've got a status code of 201, uh, but got 200. So this assertion is now failing. Similarly, I can write a test for a content type to be present. So I'll write a test for this header content type to be present. Again, 
we've got a snippet here for that. So let's go and response headers. So we can just click on the snippet here and we've got our uh, test back. So pm.response to have header content type. And if I send this request, now I know that my content type header is present in my response. So let's look at some more tests, which for the interest of time, I've already written this one. We want to see now whether we're getting a valid media type back. So within our response, we can see that we've got this property called media type, which has a value image. So let's see how we can write a test for this. I will go and uncomment this section. So as you can see, uh, we are setting up a constant value here, response, and using Postman properties and, and some constructs, we can define this uh, response. So we say pm.response.json, and we can write our test for media type to be valid. And it's simply using the BDD library that I talked about earlier. You can write something like pm.expect this response value to have own property media type. And as you can see, this is the property media type which we are checking for. And similarly, we can write another test, pm.expect response dot media type to be to equal image, right? So this value should be image. So let's submit this request. And as you can see, uh, we've got our media type being valid. If I change this to something like, let's say images, now, uh, my test fails, right? Now, now let's look at uh, schema validation. So let me uncomment this piece of code and let's look at what we've got here. So again, I'm defining a constant called schema and here I'm defining the schema for this response body and as you can see, we've got this response type object. And then we've got some properties there like date, explanation, and the type for date being string, explanation strings, and so on and so forth. You could also uh, get the schema from an online schema generator or from your swagger definitions of your API or in whatever way that you like. You could, once you've got your schema, the test that you have to write is as simple as uh, pm.test uh, and you have to check pm.response to have JSON schema and pass this constant value schema. So if I submit this request, as you can see, now my schema is valid as well. Now let's actually look at changing something here. So if I change this object to let's say array, and I submit this again. And as you can see, my schema validation fails because the data should be an array as per my schema defined. Okay. Let's change it back and submit this request again. Now I've got all my tests passing as expected, right? Now let's look at some more tests. And for this example, we'll look at another cool API from NASA. This is called Asteroids Near Earth Objects Web Service. Uh, what this API does is it gives you uh, a feed or a view of all the near Earth objects going around uh, and asteroids. So let's look at what the response looks like. And I'm looking at uh, near Earth objects for uh, 6th of August to 7th of August. So let's go and submit this request. Okay, so let's examine this response a little bit. We've got uh, an el some element count of 30. So we're getting 30 near Earth objects returned for these dates and they're, they're grouped by these dates here. So we've got for our seventh, we've got a number of objects and then we're getting some objects for six. Now, uh, let's define an objective for our test. What we want to do is from all these near object, near earth objects for these dates that are being returned, 
we want to see if there are any hazardous asteroids that are probably going to you know uh, get in touch with earth or hopefully not but that's something that uh, nasa provides you uh, from this api we get a property called is potentially hazardous asteroid and as you can see it's false so uh, for the purpose of our test we want to make sure that all of the asteroids that are going around none of them are going to go and collide with earth uh, so let's go and write that test so we go to test section here and we've already we've already written some tests with our uh, for our uh, status code content type and let's look at this next test this is for a near earth object to exist in our response so let me actually go here so as you can see we are checking for this near earth object property uh, by checking pm.expect response to have own property near earth object and then we are checking for pm.expect response dot near earth object to be an object so as you can see this is an object so we are checking for that and we are saying that this property should be there in our test so let me actually comment out this piece of code and let's actually run this test And as you can see, I've got all my tests passing and I can see that these near earth objects exist, right? Now, let's see the next test that we talked about, which is we want to make sure that uh, these near earth objects do not have a, a, pot a potentially hazardous asteroid property proof. So as you can see, the idea is we can have uh, complex tests also uh, written here with some JavaScript logic. So we can, what we've done here is we've defined a variable near Earth objects and we're getting this from the response. And then we're iterating over these values uh, using the date key. And then we're actually getting, we're checking for each of the asteroid property is potentially hazardous asteroid and we are saying this should be false right so let's go and submit this but as uh, okay so this is failing let's look at why that is so let me clear out the console here and as you can see i've written some console logs here and we'll see what actually is happening when this test runs right so let me submit this again and let's look at the console logs so as you can see we were iterating through these near earth objects and we first found this property is potentially hazardous asteroid to be false so that's fine so the test keeps running the for loop keeps uh, running and the next object though this returned a potentially hazardous asteroid property true, right? So that's why my test has failed, which is what we expected in this case, right? So uh, what we can do is we know that this test is going to fail, but uh, overall, uh, let's say we've got a scenario where our developers are working on a particular feature or uh, something that we know doesn't work for now but we don't want our complete test uh, suite to fail what we can do is we can for the time being we'll go and skip this test so if i submit this again as you can see we've got this test skipped but the test results that we get are four by four so this is another way we can make sure that you know we've already written our tests, but uh, we can skip them till the feature is already there and available for us to use, right? So let's go back to our slides and let's look at the next step. 
All right. So this next tip is about code generation, which is a really neat trick from Postman. So let's go back to our basics example where we had set up this post request. We had set up some params here, some authorization header, uh, some custom headers, and again, some body content. So if I go on the right here, and click on this code section. As you can see, Postman provides us a, a snippet. So you could have your code snippet to set up this request in a number of languages like uh, Java, JavaScript, Node using certain Axios or other libraries and also Python. So this can be useful for your uh, developers as well. And let's now look at the next tip, which is collection runner. So with collection runner, we actually get into the scheme of automation testing with Postman. So let's look at what collection runner is and what it can do for us, right? So for this purpose, we've got another collection here for using Postman echo request. And what we've got here is a number of uh, requests which are organized using these folder structures. And uh, what we can do is we can simply go here and then click on run collection. So what it will do is it will execute all of these requests one after the other sequentially and you can deselect some of these requests if you want to. You can specify number of iterations that needs to run. Uh, one more thing you can do is you can specify a data file here if you wanted to. Um, to do that, what you need is you need to specify uh, variables here when you're using in your request body. And then you can uh, you, you can declare those variables within a JSON file or a CSV file, uh, and then use that data file here and run your uh, you know, collections with that data. So let's actually run this collection and see what happens. So as you can see now, all of my requests are being executed one after the other, and I'm getting a view here of how many of my requests are passed, how many have failed, and if these requests are failing, why they are failing, right? You also get these assertion errors, which you can look at and try and rectify uh, whatever has gone wrong. And also I've got a summary view here, and I can see the results here as well, right? Um, all right, so let's see what's next. So collection runner is one of the ways you can, you know, automate your tests. Uh, you can also, uh, okay, let's look at one more thing which you can do with these collection runner. There's another feature from Postman, which is called monitors. So using these monitors, what you can do is you can create a monitor and run these uh, collections on a schedule using collection runner. So that is a feature that you can explore as well if you wanted to. Uh, there's a certain number of uh, free uh, scheduled API calls that Postman gives you. Uh, yeah, and, and you can use these monitors to trigger those uh, collection runners automatically as well. Okay, so moving on. So we can also control our workflows when we are writing our tests. So when we're using collection runner and executing tests one after the other, we can also specify certain conditions in our test. Let's say using an if construct or in any other way by declaring certain variables. And you can specify, let's say postman.setNext request and the request name which will be the name of your next request that should be executed in your collection runner workflow. And if you wanted to terminate execution, you simply have to uh, pass null here, right? So that's 
one way you can also make complex workflows within your uh, when you're executing collection runners for your postman test. Now, let's look at the next step. So here, this is Newman CLI, which is a node package by uh, Postman. What it allows you to do is bring out the power of CI CD uh, to use your Postman test. And uh, you can basically using this uh, CLI tool Newman, you can integrate your Postman test within your CI CD pipelines using Jenkins or any other uh, tools that you like, right? So let's look at a demo for this one as well. We can, we'll go to the same collection that we uh, executed using our collection runner. And what we can do is let's export this and we'll export this using version 2.1 recommended, that's fine. So let's export this. And let me just copy this part and we'll save this. And as you can see, my collection was exported. So let's actually go and uh, run this collection. So we'll start up a partial window and let me actually go to this path and we should have a, a collection that we exported available here at this path. As you can see, we just exported this. So now let's go and run this collection using human. So what we can do is human run and we'll say, we'll specify the name of this collection. So if I go and run this now, so till now what we were doing was that we were using this uh, Windows application here to run all our tests, but now we are actually running this using a script and then we can now uh, use uh, this CLI script to actually embed in our, uh, you know, different CI CD pipelines and based on the response or based on the results, your next step in the pipeline can execute or, or fail based on what you're getting. Right. And um, I have also downloaded another cool utility uh, from Postman, uh, which allows you to publish HTML reports. Again, that is, this is a node package available and you can simply, uh, if you've got node installed on your systems, you can go and import these libraries and you are good to, you know, run these Newman uh, tests, uh, sorry. Okay, so let's run this one. So what we'll do is Newman run uh, the same collection, but this time we'll specify an argument and this package is called HTML extra. So let's go and run this. So what this is doing is it, it's also executing the same test that we uh, earlier executed, but it will also publish an HTML report for us, right? So you could use uh, this HTML report uh, and publish it on a web server for your teams to look at. Every time uh, your API, a new version is uh, published or some modifications are made, you could include your, uh, you know, Newman scripts within your CI CD pipelines, which will go and run this test and, you know, publish a new version of the report. So let's actually look at this report. Yep, so I've got my report published here and let's go and look at it. So as you can see, we got this uh, really good looking report here, which tells me how many requests uh, were there, uh, how many total assertions were made uh, and what number of tests failed, why they have failed, and similarly, a summary of these requests. So this can also be a really useful 
when you are you know uh, working with the APIs, running your tests, automating them, right? So hopefully, uh, I was able to give you some uh, good insight on what Postman is, what it can do for you, and uh, hopefully you guys can make use of it in your day-to-day uh, -day activities when you're working with uh, post uh, when you're working with APIs and both the developers, uh, testers, and even if client-side developers when they're working with uh, APIs, this can be a really powerful tool uh, to work with. It's beyond just making some requests and looking at the response, there's much more you can do with it. Um, since we have some time, I will actually uh, go and uh, just briefly talk about some additional features which are there in Postman, but we haven't covered it as part of this talk. So you've got this API section here. You can actually uh, create your APIs here, uh, you've got mock servers, so you can create mocks for your APIs, you can specify your request and what should be the response type, so that can be really useful as well. If you're still working on the API logic and you, you want some mock data to be available for your developers or, or uh, somebody is writing an app or a client-side application, so you could share these uh, mocks with uh, those teams as well, right? Uh, and so some useful sections or, or if you want to learn more about Postman and its utilities, you can go to this section here uh, at the bottom. And if I click on this arrow uh, question mark here, and you can see you can go to support here, And this will take me to the website. And you've got a good amount of, let's say, uh, online documentation information available about Postman. Uh, you can refer to the Postman communities, the learning center, etc. And also one important thing is you can explore the public API network for Postman, which uh, where people, teams have uh, submitted their public APIs, and you can look at how people are actually using Postman. There's some really uh, good APIs published here as well for you to look at. So yeah, that's my time for today. We will now open up to any question and answers that are there. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Thank you, Mayank. I don't see any questions on the platform, but we'll just give it a minute more before we close the session. Sure. Yeah, uh, anyways, uh, the idea is uh, Postman is, is not just an API client anymore. It's way more than that. So yeah, you, I'd urge everyone uh, who's interested to go and explore themselves, look at uh, what Postman can do for you. Uh, it's, it's got a number of uh, cool features there and a lot more uh, new features are being added. So yeah, I'm guessing no questions, so that's good, which means either everyone's understood everything or maybe people are already using Postman it's quite popular. We've had a lot of people liking the session. So thank you so much, Mayank. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess we can close the session right now. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for being here.